The cage system. It can be a bit controversial depending on who you ask. Some people love it and advocate for it, like myself, and other players think it's completely overrated and a waste of time to even learn. Now, I don't agree with that, but I do sort of understand where some of the negativity towards the cage system comes from. I do think it has a few inherent problems, and we're gonna talk about it in today's video, and I'm gonna show you how to work around them and get the most out of the cage system, especially if you're just learning. Now, I do have a whole video course dedicated to the cage system and how to get the most out of it. You can get a special discount on that course via the link in the description, but more on that later. Let's get tuned up and jump into the first example. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna focus on is breaking out of the standard caged shapes while using the caged shapes. So we're in D major here. And I'm gonna go from the standard D major voicing up to the C shape of D major. That's still a D major triad, but I'm gonna take this shape and break it up into smaller three note fragments. So there's a D major, there's a D major, there's a D major, and there's a D major. All we're doing is taking the same shape, the simple C major shape of the cage system, and we're breaking it up into its kind of basic components. And what this is doing is it's helping you find different voicings of D major in different fragments on the neck. And that's important for a few different reasons. One, as guitar players, a lot of times we don't wanna play the entire chord. If we're playing in a band setting where there's other guitar players or there's keys, or if we're recording something or you're stacking parts, a lot of times you don't need to play the entire chord. That's just too much. We can break that chord up into these different fragments and get slightly different colors or slightly different voicings based off of the caged shape. For example, let's say I wanna play that voicing. That's a really nice, round, warm, lush D major. And you may not have ever thought of playing D major from the six string root like that. That's a second inversion D major, meaning my fifth note A is in the bass. Or for example, playing that version right there. Just a simple one, three, five. Or here that's one of my favorites so what I can do to practice this is take a shape and break it up into three note chunks and then move up to the next position so there's some more voicings of D major that's a nice color that one I just played it's pretty standard Right there, that's a first inversion because I've got my major third in the bass. And then here I am back to the G shape from the cage system. Now, the reason this is important is you wanna be able to have these different sort of chord fragments accessible depending on where you're playing on the neck and what type of chord progression. So let's take that D major, C major, G major. So that is one flat seven, four in the key of D. So I'm gonna break this progression down and play it in this position right here. So there's my D, it's my C major, my flat seven, and my G major. So you can start to kind of embellish these chords by finger picking, maybe try and write some kind of part. right there, I'm just taking these chord fragments and because of the position that I'm in on the neck and not worrying about playing the entire chord shape, the chord voicing, it opens me up, it frees me up to do these nice little sort of melodic movements and kind of write a part. This is how a lot of your favorite guitar parts were written, just by taking chords, whole triads, major or minor, and breaking them out into their fragments and then moving them around in different ways between positions. is just moving triads around, fragments from the caged shapes and using them to make a little bit more musical sound than just the standard triads. There's nothing wrong with the standard triads, but it's good to have access to the different options here. 
Let's try another example, same chord progression, but instead of working in this register, the higher sort of sparkly register, let's go low. So let's take a voicing like that. And if I add the open G in there, that makes like a D sus four right there. Standard C, standard G major. This is what I was talking about earlier about using caged as a jumping off point. If you start with the basic chord shapes, but really analyze them, understand where the intervals are, understand how to break them up and use them in different ways, it'll start to open up new sounds and new ideas for you that you might not have had access to before. You can also do it with single note lines with melodies as well. So if I take this position, we're back in the C position here for D major, break this up into single notes like playing an arpeggio and start to come up with melody ideas. That's all just from that chord shape. I'm visualizing each one of those notes and moving between them. moving between the different positions. So going from this shape to this shape, so. So that's an example of using the cage system as a jumping off point instead of the end all be all way of playing chords up and down the neck, which I think is arguably the biggest problem with the cage system. Uh, don't forget, you can get a special discount on my caged course via the link in the description box down below. You can find out more about what's in the course as well as my other video courses down there. It's greatly appreciated. Also be sure to subscribe while you're down there and let me know what you thought about this video in the comments section down below. My name is Rachel. thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.